Hello and welcome to the Vagrant VirtualBox Provider Configuration video where we'll be looking at VirtualBox specific configuration settings within the Vagrant. So we can access things like setting the memory, the RAM, uh, sorry, the CPU and also we'll be adding a graphical user interface thanks to VirtualBox and this will all be done through Vagrant. So I hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching. So I've just set up a basic Ubuntu 14.04 trusty Taha 64-bit version uh, machine and I've just set that up with, with no configuration or, or any extras like that and I'm just going to jump straight in to the machine to show you. So the first command I'm going to be looking at will be the uh, cat slash proc and then we're going to be looking at the mem info. So that will give us information about the, the memory, the RAM and the the line we're actually interested in for this tutorial is the first line, which is mem total, and you can see here that's 501,000 kilobytes, which is around 512 megabytes. So pretty standard um, RAM there. And then the second command we're going to look at again is in the cat prop, and then we're going to look at the um, CPU info. And again, we need to go up to the top, and what we're looking for is the CPU cores, which is here. So it's just one at the moment. So the default machine has started up with 512 megabytes of RAM and one CPU core. So I'm going to exit out of the virtual machine into my host directory and I'm going to jump into the Vagrant file using the nano text editor. Now within the config block we're going to set up a new uh, configure block within that one for the provider. So the code is it's config dot vm dot provider and then you put the provider name so I'm using VirtualBox and you can also use VMware or Docker or even a custom machine you may have or custom software but check out the Vagrant documentation that I'll put a link to in the description um, as some of the commands you'll see today are different for each provider, that they don't all work the same cross cross provider. So this one is for VirtualBox. So now we've got our um, our V variable set, if you like. We're going to jump in and we're going to do V dot memory, and for this I'm going to set it to 1024, which is one gig, basically 1,200, 1,000. 24 megabytes sorry and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the CPU cores to 2 so now we're doubling the RAM and CPU cores of the virtual machine so I'm going to do control and O and then enter to save and control and X to jump out now what we can do is we can run the vagrant reload command as the machine is already running so what this will do is shut it down go through the configuration file again and then set it up as we as we want it to so if we just wait a few seconds while that sets up we'll be able to see our changes um, that we've just made to the vagrant file go live on the virtual machine and again we'll be running the commands uh, that you saw originally So we need to SSH into the machine, so just run the vagrant 
ssh command and there we are and I'm going to run the mem info again and we'll go up to the top and there you go in the mem total you can see now that's 101 instead of the 50 it was originally so that's around the one, th one gig amount and then we run the CPU info and then we're just looking for the CPU cores which is here and you can see that's two now so essentially we've doubled the power of the virtual machine and you can obviously depending on the hardware restrictions of your host machine you can set that to whatever you like so you could have the four core quad core processor you could do four gig of RAM six gig of RAM that kind of thing or if you have multiple machines you could use that um, to configure each one so if you were doing some sort of load balancer scenario then you may set up two web servers with the same same amount of uh, hardware you may have the uh, MySQL say database server separately which might be a bit beefier because it's it's doing more processing and that kind of thing and um, so yeah this should just hopefully help you depending on your requirements just test it out and see what works best for you now also I'm just going to exit out of the machine now also the virtual box provider does have two additional settings that we're covering today there are a few others but they're slightly more advanced which um, I will hope to cover in the future, but as this is a more of a basic introduction, I'm going to be looking at the basic commands. So for this, we need to go back into our um, Vagrant file, and again, within the VirtualBox configuration block, we're going to add two new lines. So we're going to do, it's V again, with the dot notation, GUI. And so that's what, what, what we're going to be doing is adding a graphical user interface to the virtual machine. So if you've ever used VirtualBox or VMware on their own without a Vagrant, you'll notice you normally have a screen there. So it looks like you're actually using a machine, not just from the command line. As Vagrant is, is, a headless, uh, is, is headless software, you don't have the GUI as standard. So VirtualBox allows us to configure that through Vagrant. So it's v.gui equals true. And then it's we've got another one, it's v.name. And I'm just going to put uh, test. And what that is, when you run the, G, um, the GUI, you'll have a window. And it essentially just gives it a name. So it's easier to keep tabs on. So at the top here, for example, you have Alex at element. What you'll see then is this test, followed by some, some other bits and bobs. But that's what the name one does. So to use the GUI, we need to install a GUI onto our machine. So I'm going to do Control O and then Enter to save and Control X to exit. Now what we need to do is we need to go back into the machine with a vagrant ssh command and we're going to install a light light desktop just to show you how it works so we need to do sudo app dash get install dash dash no dash install dash recommends lubuntu dash desktop so the We'll be, use, we'll be doing a light Ubuntu desktop installation, so it won't look like your typical Unity one that you may be using or that I'm actually using. And we're also doing the no install recommends flag. So what this means is it won't install any bloat, it won't install any software that it, it thinks you should have or that it recommends. It will just install the bare minimum that it requires and I'm just I'm running that for the purpose of this tutorial as the, the size nearly doubles so it's slower to download and install 
So what we're going to, so I'm just going to run that command now. So you can see there all the gear, and it's going to need 115 megabytes of disk space. So I'd only recommend running the GUI if you need it. Um, you may need it for debugging, or if you're doing some sort of coding with a browser, you need to see the results, that kind of thing. So only if you need it, um, or if you just want to play around and, and test it out, that kind of thing. So I'm going to do yes, or Y, sorry, to, to install that. And then I'm just going to come back to that. I'm going to pause the video, let it finish, so you don't have to wait for 11 minutes um, to watch it while it downloads. So the download has just finished, it's installed everything, set everything up, and that should hopefully be ready to go. Now just a thought, if you do have any issues before the installation, or sorry, during the installation, then I'd recommend running the sudo apt get update command. Um, so that can just refresh the packages uh, any information it needs, so it should just install um, without a problem. So yes, yeah, so just keep that in mind. If you have any problems, run the sudo apt-get update command, just in case. So now then, we'll exit out of the machine, and I'm just going to do the vagrant reload command to bring the machine down, allow it to go through the Vagrant file and fingers crossed the machine should now run in VirtualBox as we can see here. I'll just bring that onto the screen and resize that for you. We'll just close these messages here. Okay, so as you can see, the machine has used the v.name variable from our configuration. So it's a test exclamation mark up here in the, the title of the window. And also we've now got a lovely graphical user interface. So I'm going to do just change that to the vagrant user. Uh, and the password is vagrant by default and just log in. And now we have a, a, a nice working graphical user interface. We've got our desktop with the usual kind of stuff on here. So whatever you need to do, it all works fine. We've got task manager, software update, and network, everything here. So that's how you run the GUI through Vagrant using the VirtualBox provider. I hope this video has covered um, some new information and I hope that you find it useful um, for whatever you're doing. I'd love to know if you are doing some stuff with it in the comments below. Um, I'd really like to see what you're doing. I find it very, very interesting. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching and getting to the end of the video. I hope you found it useful and informative. Um, if you like the video and you found it helpful, then please like or subscribe or share with your friends. I'm really grateful for any feedback as well, any constructive criticism. You can message me or uh, put some comments below and I'll be sure to uh, reply when, when they come through. And Remember, any information um, such as commands or links or anything like that should be in the description, but if not, let me know. Thank you and see you next time.